Hi there. So today we're looking at uh, three different um, systems here. Um, starting from uh, this end here, we're looking at the D-Link DNS 321. Next to that is the Netgear ReadyNAS uh, model number RND 400 version 3. Um, you'll notice on the front here, it does say ReadyNAS uh, NV+. Beside that, we have a, uh, uh, an Acer um, Windows Home Server, uh, which is the uh, Acer Inspire Easy uh, H341. Once again, that is the Acer Inspire Easy Store H as in Hotel 341. Now, all of these systems are what are considered as a NAS, and um, a NAS is a, uh, a network, uh, uh, more or less a network accessible uh, storage. So this is called, uh, and NAS stands for Network, network Attached Storage. Uh, it's NAS, all in capital letters. Now, um, just going through these units, um, this unit here is a, um, is two drives, whereas in the other drives, or sorry, the other units are four drive models. So just to give you a peek inside, um, we do have uh, four, these are four hot swappable um, hard drive bays, as well as in the, uh, the Acer, there are also uh, four hot swappable bays as well. On the, the D-Link, this one does come with two bays, um, and uh, to access them, you basically take the front plate off and you have the, um, the hard drives in there. Now these units do not come with hard drives except for this one here, which is the, um, the, uh, the Acer, the Acer Inspire uh, uh, Easy Store H341. It does come with one uh, green terabyte Western Digital hard drive. Um, so it does come with that, and it is preloaded with the Windows operating system. You do also get the um, installation CD or the recovery CD for um, the uh, Windows uh, server. It is a Windows, uh, Windows Home Edition server. So you can use that to store movies and such. <clears throat> now, these units here, I do use them to store um, uh, content for my customers, so I'm a, I'm a website designer and graphic designer, and uh, a lot of my files I store on my server. So um, to make sure that uh, that data is not lost, I do do multiple backups across all of these different platforms here. Um, on the, uh, and each one of these units are two gig, or sorry, two terabyte drives. So uh, these are green terabyte drives. I'll just show you one of them here in the D-Link. This is a, uh, a two terabyte Western Digital. It is a green model, so it is uh, eco-friendly, and uh, it does save uh, save some power. So that is the two terabyte Western Digital um, hard drives. Now you can set these units up so they are um, uh, what are called just a bunch of drives, and if you set them up as just a bunch of drives. What that means is you're not utilizing uh, the, um, the RAID feature. RAID simply means that if one drive fails, the other drive is still operational. The likelihood of both drives failing is uh, pretty slim. So um, I would always suggest using, using the RAID technology that are built into each one of these units. Another suggestion that I have to, um, to everybody is and unfortunately, I didn't take this into practice simply because of the price of hard drives nowadays. Um, the price of hard drives right now has skyrocketed, so they are they are pretty pricey right now. And um, this is the reason why I haven't haven't taken advantage of my suggestion that I'm going to make shortly. And that is, I always suggest to use different manufacturers. So this is a Western Digital drive. You may want to use a Seagate drive as the secondary, simply because you don't know if you're going to get a bad batch of drives, which is, which is um, um, it's not unlikely, but it's also um, 
it, it's something that you do want to uh, keep in mind. So I always recommend using two different brands of drives in, uh, in your RAID units. Um, this system here, uh, it does use uh, four drives and basically to, um, to eject the drive, you simply press down on it, it will then release a lever, you pull out the lever and you pull out the drive. And then you have the drive uh, in the unit as well, another two terabyte um, in here. Similarly, to put it in, you simply just push it in. Once it's in there, it locks in. Pretty straightforward and simple. Close the unit. Similar, similarly with the Acer, you simply uh, press this orange button here. Or sorry, uh, not press it, but you push the orange button. Once you push the orange button, it will then uh, release the latch, in which case you can just push it and then pull. Now one thing to note about this particular unit, this entire thing here is plastic. Um, <clears throat> The one on here is also plastic, but it's a little more sturdier. Um, also because of the, um, uh, the hinge is a metal hinge compared to the unit here, which is completely plastic. And this, I will tell you, feels very flimsy. Um, so when you are taking out drives for this unit, um, you do want to be careful that you're not, uh, you're not damaging that drive in any way. Now when you take out this drive, um, you will see, and I'll just show you here that it is. Um, being held together by really just plastic. Um, you can screw it down, um, but basically that's all the protection you have. Now I'm not saying that this, um, you have to be careful of this, because typically when you put this in one place, uh, it's staying there. So you're not moving that around, you're not shifting it around, so it should be a safe, um, a safe system. So um, this is a, a comparison of three um, network attached storage devices. Um, we're looking here at the, um, <coughs> the D-Link, and this is the D-Link DNS321. We're also looking at the Netgear ReadyNAS model number RND400 version 3. This is the ReadyNAS NV+. And then we have the Acer Inspire, which is the uh, Windows Server Home Edition. And that is the Easy Store H as in Hotel 341. Yeah, uh, sorry, just to put in this hard drive uh, into this, into this D-Link, I'll just show you here um, how the insides look. So you just match up the connectors on the back with the connectors um, in the, uh, the, 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 um, the D-Link. Now you'll notice here, uh, just further up, you'll notice there that that is the uh, serial ATA connector, or the SATA connector, however you want to pronounce that. Um, it is there. So you do want to um, line up your drive so it is able to connect to it. And basically what you do is you push in the drive until it clips in and just place the uh, front on here like so. Now I will say when you are putting this on, the inside metal piece is sharp, so you do want to be careful that you don't cut yourself um, when using it. So, just to turn these units around, I'll just turn around the D-Link, just to give you a better idea of how it looks. So we'll look at the D-Link first. Basically, the D-Link is pretty um, pretty uh, slim, so it's a, it's a two unit, so it's two hard drives. You have on the back side uh, a RJ45 or an Ethernet connection. This, is, this does give you up to gigabit. All of these units do give you up to gigabit. And then you have uh, the power adapter. The power adapter is a proprietary power adapter that uh, comes with the unit. This is basically all that comes, um, uh, comes on the back of this unit. These here are the, um, you just push these down. Uh, it actually just uh, slides down like that. And um, that is what ejects the um, the uh, hard drives. This does come with a fan on the back and it does power up when the, um, the hard drives are under stress or, um, or under load. So when it does become hot or it does be reach a certain temperature, it does um, start to, uh, the fan does start up. The next one I'm going to look at is the Netgear and this is the Netgear ReadyNAS. The Netgear ReadyNAS is complete metal except for the actual drive cases. 
where the drives uh, sit into on the unit. So this unit here does use a standard um, power adapter and uh, basically it does have the uh, RJ45, the, the um, up to one gigabit, it does do 10, 100 and gigabit. It does come with two USB, uh, that is a uh, 2.0 USB port. It also comes with a, a, you know, some people look at this as a handle. This is actually um, to be used as a locking system. So basically you run your cable through it and you lock it in. Um, you can lock that in a shelf. There also is the, um, the option there for the uh, other type of lock that if you want to lock that in as well. So this is the unit. It does come with a much bigger fan and this fan also only comes on um, during a portion of, uh, of time when the, uh, the unit is under stress. The fan on this, I will tell you, is quite loud when it starts up, but it only lasts for a couple of seconds and then it, it basically just settles down. This fan here, being that it's larger, it is quieter compared to the, the D-Link. So the larger the fan, the quieter it is because it moves more air. Finally, we are going to look at, now, sorry, I will tell you that this unit here is quite heavy. This is complete metal casing, um, metal housing. It is a, a very heavy unit. So you do need two hands uh, to lift that unit. And finally, this is the, um, <coughs> the Acer Inspire. Um, this unit here does come with, uh, I'll just uh, cover that portion up there, it does come with, uh, on the back side, it does come with a um, external uh, serial ATA or external SATA port. It does have a reset button here. It does have gigabit on the back end, so it does do 10, 100 and gigabit. It, and it, then it comes with four USB ports. Um, each one of these USB ports are um, version 2. Uh, it also comes with a slot over here that you can put an expansion slot. Um, this is a PCI slot that you could uh, put in a, 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 a what's called a low riser card. Um, it does utilize the standard um, power adapter, the power uh, cable. And then it does come with a small fan, and I will say that this fan is pretty disappointing because um, of the size of the unit, um, I, would sus I, I would have hoped that uh, Acer would have put a, um, a larger fan on this unit. It does have a, a vent on the side, on either sides in fact. It does come with a vent, so it does uh, allow for some venting as well. Now just to give you a little more specs on this unit, this does come with the, uh, as I said, Microsoft Windows Home Server. The process on, processor on it is an Intel Atom, it's a D as in Delta 410 processor. It does come with 2 gigs of DDR2 memory. And as I said before, it does come with a standard 3.5 inch um, Western Digital Green 1 terabyte drive. Uh, so these uh, these are the units that, that it, these are the items that it does come with that are included on this uh, on this device. <clears throat> One of the things just to note on the front here um, is the power button, as well as different options here. Now, one of these, the, uh, sorry, these are uh, light indicators. <clears throat> so on this unit, it also allows you to put a USB on the front side of this, so you can put a USB on on the front. Um, and it, there is a, a, a button here which says USB backup and you basically press the button and it backs it up to the USB on the front side so it does come with a one touch or one click um, USB backup button um, so this is a power saving edition and one of the other features that it has here is it is um, According to the, uh, the label here, it is DLNA certified. Um, to be honest with you, I am not sure what DNLA is, but uh, I'm just going to do a quick search here. And it is Digital Living Network Alliance. So it is a, uh, it is a certified product of DLNA. Basically, this concludes our video today. Um, we, are, we have reviewed the D-Link uh, DNS 321, the Netgear ReadyNAS RND 400 version 3, the 
Acer Inspire, which is a Windows uh, Server Home Edition, um, Easy Store H341. Thank you for watching the video. Please rate and review.